Lord, we come to you this morning with gladness in our heart, Father. And as we start our devotion, Lord, we ask that you bless us, Father. Keep our ears open, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to bring the Holy Spirit among us, Lord, and to be able to speak for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hope you had a, a good sleep and that God has seen it fit for us to gather this morning to worship him. Uh, not only worshiping him, we are going to spend some time to pray. <clears throat> I know Junior said it's a long one. Um, I don't know what he means, a long one. Uh, but I know when we hear of the book of Matthew chapter 24, we associate it with some sort of prophecy. Uh, but this morning, we'll try to somehow move from prophecy in terms of dates, but just in terms of what God wants us to learn and know from his scripture this morning. Uh, I know we have prayed, but uh, still I, I want us to pray. Let us pray, Our gracious master in heaven, here we come as we are. We thank you, Father, for you have enabled us to wake up this morning. Father, we know without you, even what we study may will not have any meaning in our lives. We pray this morning that you speak to our hearts, interpret your word to us, and above all, may you teach us to pray, especially for those who are not able to even pray for themselves. And may we intercede for one another. Cleanse us and forgive our sins even before we pray. If there is any sin among which is in us, which will make our prayer this morning and our worship this morning be unlike you, Lord, may we ask forgiveness. Be with us now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I'll quickly just uh, go through the book of uh, Matthew chapter 24. As I said, it's a book which we associate with uh, prophecy. But I want us to look at it answering the question which Christ asked, uh, if I may read. Um, uh, first one to three. Actually, for those who have the, 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 the Bible, which is in red, in terms of what Christ said, the writings are in red. You can see almost the whole book is in, uh, chapter is in red, which means Christ spoke all these words. I read one and two, three. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown out. Verse 3. This is now the question which the disciples ask. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world? The disciples are really worried, especially when Christ says that uh, no stone will be left untouched. And uh, as we read in the scripture, the temple in Jerusalem was a very big temple which was well built. But Christ is telling them no stone will be left on top of each other. It will be destroyed. And then they went ahead to ask, tell us, when will these things happen? There are two questions they ask, when and what. The first thing is, when will these things be? And the other question is, what shall be the sign of the coming? In fact, Christ did not go to explain when. He went ahead to, spread, to explain what are the signs. And that's what we are going to look today. I've actually 
tried to, to split this into four sections of this uh, study today. One is chapter one and first one to three, it is actually foretelling of the, uh, the destruction of the temple, which we have actually read. From verse four to 28, it talks about troubles before the destruction of Jerusalem. 29 to 41, Christ foretells other signs and the mysteries at the end of the world. And then verse 42 and 51, which I would like us to concentrate on later on is exaltations to watchfulness. I may not be able to read every fast today, but I'm going just to pick a few. We have read one to three, which is actually trying to open us to the scripture itself, answering the question which the disciples or the question which the disciples asked. So when you read down from four to 28, Christ is trying to answer the question, what, as I've already said. Christ, actually, if you read verse five, I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase quickly, or if you have your Bible, you can go along with myself. And actually, when you are reading this chapter 24, it's also, if you have your Bible, you look at the book of Luke chapter 21 as well. This account is also in the book of Luke 21. Verse 5 is a warning. As I said, 4 to 28 is talking about the troubles before the destruction of Jerusalem. And as you know, for those who study the scriptures, in AD 70, Jerusalem was indeed destroyed. So these are the events which happened before, and we can relate them to what is happening even in the world around us. When you read chapter five, five, six, and seven, it talks about, five, it talks about deception, which will happen. Verse six, it talks about wars and rumors of wars. Verse seven, it talks about famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and others. And then actually verse eight, which is quite unique, it actually says, this will be the beginning of sorrows. After all these things which he has listed in the three verses, verse eight says, this will be the beginning of all sorrows. And then you ask yourself, if there are wars and rumors of wars and uh, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and then somebody tells this is just the beginning, you'll get to be worried, especially when if you have encountered any of these for many of us, maybe we have not gone through areas where or we have not encountered wars. We have always been in peace. But for those who have gone through this, and then somebody tells us the beginning of sorrows, then you'll be able to get worried, especially thinking what more to happen. Verse 9 also it talks about, uh, let me just read verse 9. Verse 9, he says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for, for my name is sake. This is actually a warning uh, 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 to the disciples that they were going to be killed, hated for his name's sake, betrayed by fellow believers. False prophets will be among us. And then verse 12, which also I want to read. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Think about it. The love for many will wax cold. Why is it that people will not love one another? Actually, when you read the book of Luke, it says those who will betray one another, brothers, parents, People with the close members will betray one another. Uh, in time is not against us, it's against us. And also, when you fast 13, actually, that's where we get an assurance. 
it tells us, despite all this, what is happening, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Endurance. And then I'm, my question is, or what we need to pray for, especially this morning, is to ask God to help us when all these things are happening around us, to be able to persevere to the very end. We know what's happening at the moment. You can link it to the crisis to such a events if you can relate. This is just a tip of some of the things which have even happened before. Well, history tells us even the disciples themselves who believed, they were actually killed because of his name's sake. We haven't actually reached even there. And then the other thing which he, the question I'll ask, how do we endure in the midst of this tribulation? Another question also we need to ask, what can we do to keep ourselves spiritually strong when these things are happening? Verse 14 also says, the gospel shall be preached to the end of the world and the end shall come. Another question we need to, to ask, as also we make it a prayer request this morning, is how can we preach? when we are going through all this tribulation? Are we able to reach out others when we are going through these tribulations? Because it says the gospel shall be preached. There should be somebody who's going to preach this message. It's us. But it's still while we are doing it, we'll be persecuted. And then it calls, for, again, it calls for endurance. Verse 21, if I just skip some verses, but then there was also a mention of, therefore, verse 15, when therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet stand in the holy place. Whoever who read it, let him understand. It's actually quoting the book of Daniel as well to say what was going to happen, especially when the temple was going to be destroyed. Actually, I was going to read something about this, but I may not have time. Uh, the first 21, great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world. Again, the first is saying about the tribulation, which has never happened since the creation of the world and nor ever shall be. And except that these days shall be shortened and there shall not flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So Christ also has an, a way out that when we are going through these tribulations, this is for a short while. By and by, it will come to an end. All this which we are going through will come to an end. And it's for a short, it's short lived. And then um, I'll go to verse 22. There is an assurance, which I've already said, the days shall be shortened. That's an assurance. Verse 23, false Christ, they shall deceive even the very elect. So the believers this morning, we are not saved. Us knowing the truth, we are not saved. In any case, the deceivers or the false prophecies will be able to target those of us even who knows the scriptures. And verse 26 as well is the one which is also saying about verse 26. It says, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, just a minute. Verse 26, behold, I, 25, behold, I have told you before, wherever, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the sacred chambers, believe it not. So the caution is, let us not believe without searching the scripture so that we can be able to know the truth. Okay. Verse 29 to 41 actually is the good news for us. After the tribulation, the son of man 
or Christ will come. That is what we read from 29 to 30 it tells us after all these tribulations, Christ will indeed come. But I like us to look at verse 34. What does it mean? So likewise, verse 33, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. And then he says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Somebody will ask the generation, which generation? The Bible actually, 40 years calls is the generation and Christ is actually talking to his disciples. This generation will not shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. What does it mean by generation? We know it is 40 years, think about it. The temple was destroyed in AD 70, which means actually that is a generation. The disciples saw it happen. But again, when the Bible mentioned about the generation, when you read the book of Matthew, Matthew 12, 39, a generation will also mean a group or a class of people. In other words, even somewhere elsewhere in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it's mentioned about the generation. It's actually a class of people. Let's say it's all a group of people. In other words, it may mean those people who are wicked. It can be a generation. It can take a long, long time. People can be wicked for a very, very long time. So again, this is a continuous process. These are events which will be taking place until Christ comes. It's a generation. It takes us who are believing. We can say as Adventists, we are going from generation to generation, but the word of God remains the same. So we are going through that process. So it's a group of people, if you can also interpret it that way. But it's still in literal sense, a generation takes around 40 years and then another generation comes. So the prophecy or the word which is spoken in the book of Matthew, part of it was fulfilled, especially the temple which Christ talked about. It was destroyed. But still we are waiting for that second coming of Christ and the events which are leading to that time, especially events which are to do with tribulations. Verse 37, also it talks about the like, it is likeness to the day of Noah. What happened when Noah was building the ark? We know that there were people out there who were called to do the work of God, but they refused. We are told it's only Noah and his family. Think about 120 years still only a family sect. What were other people doing? They thought these things would happen. This man told us 100 years ago, the flood is coming. They gave up, but then indeed it happened. They were eating, drinking, marrying, and all sorts of things. We also see these things in the world. As Adventists, we have also seen movements coming and then predicting the day and things don't happen. What happened with those people? They just say, no, Christ is not coming. They give up. Even in 1844, our founders, some of them gave up because they were almost thinking, no, I think Christ, what he said has not come. There's no point. 2000 came, the millennium. People were expecting something to happen. Christ has not still come. So let us not miss the mark of what Christ is telling us. From verse 42 to 51, it's talked about exaltation to watchfulness. Actually, this 41 to 51 actually leads to first chapter 25, which talks about the virgins, but today is about 42 to 50 or 40, uh, 24. 42 tells us, watch for you not know the hour. What does it call, what is watchfulness to you and me? And how should we be able to watch? 
verse 44, it says ready, to be ready. How do we get to be ready? Let me actually read 43 and 44. But how this, that if the good man, good man of the house had known in what, uh, what watch the thief will, thief will come, he will have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken, Pass verse four. Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not the son of man cometh. Verse 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord had made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. So we have been told to watch. If you know when the thief is going to come and drop you, you'll not sleep. It's exactly what Christ is telling us. In as much as we have waited for a long, long time, let us keep watching. For sure, Christ will come. And while we are doing that in watching, let us continue still to labor in his vineyard, to proclaim the truth to his people. That's what the Bible has told us, that to be a good servant who is going to give meat to his household, his servant in due season. The faith of the unfaithful servant. What is unfaithful servant? Unfaithful servant is somebody who has given up watching and he actually says in verse 48, but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my heart delayed his coming. In fact, when we stop watching and start doubting, we become unfaithful servants. And we start saying, our hearts start saying, he has delayed. And what do we do? We begin not. We begin to smite, actually, and he shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware. So the question we have this morning is, we have watched for a long time. We are almost giving up. And when we have just given up is when Christ will come. It will be quite a shame. After all these years we have been faithful and then we give up at the last minute then our portion will be in, the, in eternal destruction. I'll stop over there and ask for a few questions or any thought on what I've shared this morning. I know I've rushed through. It is quite a long chapter if we were to go into the prophecy and other associated events which Christ is telling us in this chapter. Any comments or thoughts? I think one thing we can, as you go through this chapter, it's all about um, being ready. Uh, there's a lot of things happening. Sometimes as Adventists, we sometimes think certain things have to happen or Sunday law or um, the, the, something with finance and, and, and we are looking out for some of those things but uh, when, when you read the Bible it says it, um, um, that people will be married and given marriage and, and such like and so when these things are happening it may not be that it's happening all over the world maybe it's the, West, the western world we, we we don't really know. Maybe it's in, um, in the Amazon or in um, the West Indies, uh, you know, the, when it comes to uh, their countries that uh, there's lots of Adventists in there. And so will it all be happening in those countries or, what, or whether it's is it the Western world? It's difficult to say, but we know that God says that um, we need to be ready for when he comes. And so, for some of us, uh, Christ's coming could be a tomorrow in, in the terms of that we may not uh, uh, be, you know, we, we may be taken in the night. 
and and so that's our time so if we are not ready and we can't wait to for certain things to be happening for us to be ready but we should always be uh, doing the will of God so that indeed when he comes he will be able to say well done thy good and faithful servant enter thou into his joy I think there's a lot in this chapter isn't there there's lots of signs and and warning that God has given us and I think as Douglas says this is about preparation some of us could get really scared about what we're reading and and especially about the time that we're going to have to enter into but I agree it's just about um, preparing ourselves making sure that we at any point right now if Christ were to come that we're ready let's not wait for these things to happen because if we do that it's too late it's, it's interesting to note that um, the, the passage says when all these things happen it's not the end it's only the beginning and I like the analogy that it gives that of um, a, a woman in labour in fact earlier on in your surmise Uncle Henry you said um, let us labour <laughs> uh, in getting ourselves ready and in verse 4 verse is now um, but in, in the thing it says, um, you know, uh, it gives the knowledge of a pregnant woman and, you know, pray that you're not um, like a, a pregnant woman. And we find that, or I'm told that, no, we do find because I experienced it, that when a woman is about to give birth, the amount of pain she goes through intensifies until the moment of birth. And then once the child is, um, you know, delivered, the pain goes and in a similar way, the analogy that Jesus gives here is pretty much what we're to um, expect. You know, we're going to have increasing pain as, you know, as his coming gets closer. We then get the, um, the, the, to the point where, in the analogy, the birth occurs and you know, we are sealed and saved and what have you. And we have the period of, of more trouble until he finally comes. And uh, I suppose it's in, in that time, when again, going back to the analogy, the baby's um, being born, you know, we are being sealed. And all we need to do now is wait for, um, for the Lord to come and take us home. All right. Uh, uh, let me just read something here regarding watchfulness and the commentary, as the commentary says. When Christians in Jerusalem saw this happen, you know, this is the warning which Christ gave about destruction of Jerusalem. They fled out of the city as Jesus instructed, whereas most of the Jews were left behind and perished. It's estimated that more than one million Jews perished during the siege of Jerusalem, which had uh, 97,000, uh, with 97,000 more taken captive. However, during a temporary respite, when the Romans unexpectedly raised their siege of Jerusalem, all the Christians fled, and they say that not one of them lost his life. Their place of retreat was Pella, a city in the foothill east of Jordan River. What this tells me is the benefit of reading the scripture and being watchful because they knew what Christ said and they knew the signs, they fled. None perished. The same way, if we look at the signs but not putting the dates, as Christ was not addressing the dates, Christ was actually saying, these are the signs, and he was trying to tell the disciples the signs. So let us look at the signs and not set the dates. The thinking that he, if we start thinking that he he's, isn't coming back for a long time, so I can do as my heart desires, is what Christ is warning against. Let us not start thinking about Christ isn't coming, so we have waited for that very long time. So I can do anything which my heart 
desires. This morning, that is a warning which Christ is telling us. Let us not think about it. Let think, us focus on what he has told us to do, watching and preaching. Actually, it says, let us watch. And then the other thing we read is about <laughs> preaching. For the word of God will be preached unto the whole earth, and the end shall come. That is the only duty. If we sleep before then, let it be so. But let us not concentrate on giving the timing of all dates and the speculations. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your love. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for this very, very important reminder. So Lord Jesus, as we've heard you this morning, Lord, we pray that, Lord, this words that we've heard, Lord, help that, Lord, they will not stand against us in judgment. Help that, Lord, as we've heard, we pray that, Lord, we will apply these words in our lives. So bless us now as we go, as we start our day today. Lord, we thank you for the, thank you for Elder Henry. Thank you for using him this morning to bless us. We pray also that, Lord, you will bless his family in a mighty way. We pray for those that are sick. We pray that, Lord, you will do that which only you can do. So, Father God, now I pray that as we continue our day, those of us have to travel back, some of us have to go to wherever we need to do today, Father. We pray that, Lord, you will be with us. And at the end of the day, we will all testify of your goodness. We will come together in our prayer, in our prayer time, in our family worship, and testify of your goodness. And thank you for keeping us. Thank you, and pray that you to bless each and every one of us. We ask and pray this message in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.